Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 10 of season one of The Expanse. This is the finale of season one. Um, but I've heard that the book, the first book, goes well into season two, so this might not be a finale as much as it's just ending this season. Uh, I don't really know what to expect. They might, I mean, this show has been like just on an upward climb, so they might just keep climbing. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to lead this season into the next season. The good news is, is I don't have to wait. <laughs> Y'all had to wait. I don't have to wait. I get to launch right into it. So, and I've also noticed that my commentaries on a show that I really like, they end up getting incredibly long because I'm either talking about my feelings about the show, where I think it's going, about the characters, the building, the directing, the everything about it. Like just like I, I blab on and on and on and they get longer and longer and longer. So this one's not gonna be any different. So if you don't wanna hear me talk, skip ahead. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little bit of a recap of things that I've learned, not only throughout the season, but the last episode was so informative. Julie was on the scopuli. Um, her father was responsible for the biological weapon that was on the Anubis. The Anubis then attacks the Scopuli and takes Julie aboard. Julie is held captive, but the biological weapon starts taking over the engine of the Anubis. She then breaks out. She comes into contact with the biological weapon, which means that it does not have to be ingested. It does not have to go through a weapon. It just needs to absorb into your skin. That's terrifying. She takes the Anubis 1A and she heads to Eros, but before she puts a transponder on the asteroid in which she leaves the Anubis. And that is for Anderson Dawes, who never answers that phone call. I know it's not a phone, but still. Uh, she leaves it there for him. Lionel Polanski is the code name and she's off to Eros. I don't know how Fred Johnson learned about that other than the fact that they're both OPA, um, but he's not responsible for that ship. He didn't know about it. So then Julie sends out a distress call while she is on the Anubis. And that is the distress call they heard on the Canterbury that sent them out that got them destroyed by the Anubis. <sighs> so once she gets to Eros, she rents a room and she essentially realizes that she's dying from coming into contact with this, but also probably feels very betrayed by Anderson Dawes. We find out after she's dead that her father, while very upset, finds it actually lucky that they were able to recover her body so they could recover the biological weapon that is then inside of her. And his boy, Dresden, is the one that tells him, uh, who then instructs his crew to get the injections ready. And what I got from that is, is that they were either injecting the people with the biological weapon, putting them in some form of a protective room and then radiating them. And I don't know if that was to make it grow, if that was to test it, if that was to kill it. They were telling them that it was iodine. I don't believe that for one second. Um, but again, this is on series. It is not on earth. And I don't know where Julie's father is. I think they said earth for him because she was on series and then she left. So I'm not quite sure who was where on that. Dresden also calls what happened on Phoebe a revelation eh? um, and says that they need it to learn so they can learn. So is it AI? Is this a living thing? Like, or are they just watching it adapt? Whatever this thing is, how it left Julie, it's terrifying. And speaking of the radiation bunkers where the people are kept, Holden and Miller are then exposed to radiation. Now, at the end of the last episode, I was like, there's no way they're not going to kill them off. I forgot what show I was watching. Uh, I, I forgot what show I was watching. They very well can kill both of them off. Um, I, I don't know if that's exactly what they were exposed to. I know that that symbol means radiation, and I would think Holden would know a little bit about that. Um, it, they, he said that it's fatal. He said that they're dead. <sighs> I didn't look at the cast list to see how long certain people are in the show. Uh, if that were the case, I would know what's happening to Grimes. And I think somebody in the comments was like, Grimes is gone. Dookie is gone. Like a lot of the people that I'm like, are they still alive? I don't know if Diago is still alive, if he's just floating into space, if somebody picked that kid up or not. I, I would hope so. That's a terrifying way to die. Uh, but actually you just open up the hatch and breathe it in and it's over. It's over. So the, this show doesn't mess around. 
And they're pretty true to science and things that are real. And when you've been exposed to a lot of radiation, there really isn't any way back. Um, but like, like the people that were in there were probably exposed to a lot of radiation because they were already lying on the ground. My question is, like, can they just like lose like, I don't know, a thyroid or like, like, like they just can't have kitties anymore. I mean, I'm in dentistry. I work with radiation every day. I stand in the room while I'm taking x-rays most of the time because it's digital. So it's like very light so much that there's no scatter rays. It's not penetrating into me. I wear a dosometer. I know this for a fact. Like, so like maybe they didn't get hit with a lot of radiation. How does he know it was a full blast? Like, like, how does he know that this was a fatal amount? I just started liking Miller. I don't want him to die. I mean, now that he doesn't have the hat, like I'm, 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 I'm with him. I'm with him. I like him. I like the dynamic he has with Holden. Like it is like, like uh, two dudes that are just trying to like both lead and neither one of them want to listen to each other. <laughs> and Miller and Holden, and I think Holden hitting Miller or Miller hitting Holden, I'm not quite sure how that worked out in the last episode, but all I know is I was delighted by it. Not that I even dislike either one of them, but like the fact that like I didn't know who to root for. <laughs> I was like, hey, cool. <sighs> I would actually be really sad if either one of them went away. But I'd be more sad if they took away Amos, if they do anything to Amos. I can't. Anyway, um, Christian visits DeGraff's husband and I was like, yeah, I know she's sad. Yeah, I know she's guilty. But then when she goes up to his office, my brain is just going, she's looking for clues. She's looking for something. And she does. She finds some files um, of like data, like in pencils, which I thought was a really cool way to store it, um, about the ships. She sees that the ships that attacked the Canterbury and the Doniger were built at Bush she sees that the ships that were built, damn it. She sees that the ships that attacked the Canterbury and the Doniger were the. Okay. She sees that the ships that attacked the Canterbury and the Doniger were built at the Bush Naval Shipyard, which is on Earth. Um, I wasn't aware it was on Earth until it was revealed later in the episode. <laughs> but like, she didn't seem surprised when she read it. She seems more concerned about the drives and which ships they were installed in, more so than like, oh, I know where these are being made. But not only that, the fact that de Graff had it and he was for Mars, is Mars manufacturing ships on Earth and we didn't know? Or was he a traitor? Or was was he murdered? Like, I am... I, it feels like a Perry Mason episode all of a sudden. And I know a lot of people told me to sit back and enjoy and don't overthink things and that there's nothing to solve, but that's not how my brain works. I like to get ahead of the story and feel really satisfied when I've guessed it. And then when I don't, because it happens more often than not with this show, I'm like, well, I tried. And then we see Fred Johnson. Now, at the beginning where they showed Fred Johnson, I was like, okay, this is a tough SOB. And then they showed the destruction of Anderson Station and that he was responsible for it. And I was like, I don't like that, but I don't know anything about it. And then we're seeing him throughout the episodes and I'm like, I don't know whether or not we should or should not trust him. Now this monologue that he gives and he sends out to the system, to me, not only proves his innocence, but like that one, he is 100% in support of the belt. Two, he's very proud of being OPA. And three, he doesn't want to be that guy anymore or be known as that guy. <laughs> that guy. Believe me, I've seen in the comments. <laughs> I've seen in the comments where I said that in episode four. <laughs> I will be watching a podcast. I, I, I promise I will watch it or listen to it, whichever one. I know it's on YouTube as well. What's great about this chip is that not only does it reveal that the ships that blew up the Canterbury and the Doniger, that they were being built by Earth, but it kind of exonerates him because there's a ship heading his way, the Nathan Hale, I think. And it's, they're accusing him of doing this when he has proof that he is not responsible for it. 
And he's like, some people may not believe me. And they're trying to make him this scapegoat. It's just like, well, Fred Johnson was responsible for all this destruction. So we'll just throw it at him because people will believe it. He's got that reputation. But now it's almost certain that Earth is wanting to start this war. And I don't know why. Over what? And what the end game is. And like when they win the war. No one ever wins wars. But when they win the war, what are they trying to win? Ceres, the belt, all of it, the belt, Mars, Phoebe, like all these other places. Like what, what, what does Earth win if they start and win this war? And not only that, but it seems like Mars has the technology to fight them because they're the ones with the stealth tech. Now we know Earth has it, but, you know, we, we know the belt can't afford to build it. So. What? <laughs> um, and then there's also the the new Navu Navu that's being built by Fred Johnson. I don't know what we're going to do with that ship. Obviously, if the Nathan Hale is coming to Tycho, then they're also going to see that ship. Um, that ship looks huge, huge. So I don't know if <laughs> if I'm Fred Johnson, I steal that ship and I go on a hundred year mission with the Mormons. Peace out, friends. <laughs> Go into a new planet. I don't want Mars. I don't want Earth. I don't want the belt. But he is OPA, so I don't think that he would do that. I don't think that he would leave belters like that. Yeah, I'm still very much team belt, but I also understand that there's bad guys in every group. Obviously, there's bad apples, right? We, we've heard this before, but it's true that not everybody's perfect and not everybody's bad. You know, I'm not a big fan of Anderson Dawes, but like he is not perfect, but I don't think he's entirely bad. Um, I love Christian, which means that I might overlook some of her bullshit and I need to not do that. Um, I love Amos. That's the whole thought. <laughs> Why do they have to make that guy so hot? <laughs> anyway, <sighs> season finale of season one, episode 10. Let's get into it. <laughs> Got a text message from Liquor World. <laughs> oh, that's when you know you're living your life kind of crazy. Edo Station has experienced a radiation hazard breach. Maybe it was a protective ray? All ships are locked down. Yeah, well, the Rossi ain't all ships. Yeah, well, even so, they shut down all access to the docks. Ride this thing out. Something terrible is happening here, and we're not sticking around to find out what. Fuck yeah, I wouldn't. The mech shafts. <laughs> Those things are collapse. But I've been a copy of it for years. I can't even find my way through that maze. Which is why the OPA uses them as smuggling routes. On every station. Oh. Earth included. Oh. She is OPA. I don't hate her because of that, but that was a look that Amos gave her. Take us with you, please. Please. We won't be any trouble. Oh. How do you say no? I love Amos with the nod. He'll give us time. I don't want them to die. You a medic? Ice hauler. Great. Oh, shut up, Miller. Uh, I'd say we cured then. Aye. At least we'll be sharp when we melt from the inside out. <laughs> like, they're not really gonna die, right? Saw a bunch of people getting cooked. Yeah, in a radiation shelter. In a radiation shelter. How long you figure we got? A couple hours, maybe. Hours? A couple hours. We can make that. <laughs> you told your crew to take off without you? <sighs> Call him a dick. <laughs> oh, Holden next to Holden. Remember the kids. Do you have children? Not as far as I know. Why do guys always answer that question like that? If you are as fortunate as Julie Mao, she was blessed. I touched her in return. Yeah, that's a blessing. Pass. She'll make her father very proud. That is so sick. That is so fucking twisted. She's gonna save us all. Save us. Okay, we're getting this beginning again. I think maybe um, 
they just didn't take out people's names when they died. I guess only The Walking Dead really does that. When somebody's dead, then they're like, and you're out of the opening credits. <laughs> Wes Chatham. Sorry, guys. It's a really soothing opening. It's supposed to make you feel good before they kill off some great characters, huh? I can't. I'm just gonna sit here in a state of almost crying. Fun. If you're gonna die, just play video games until lights out. I can't. She ain't gonna leave you here, is she? You don't know Naomi Nagata. Six guys, heavily armed. You all right? The math sucks. You're gonna die anyway. Hey, why is everything so half cocked with you? You wanna stay here, huh? Rot You're accusing Miller of being half cocked. I grew up in a goddamn pachinko parlor, okay? And you sure as shit don't wanna die in one. Your optimism yeah. is inspire optimism. <laughs> Assholes and earthers. And naturally, you evolved into cops. Yeah, that was Sammy's idea. Yeah. He said, You wanna be an ass? You wanna be a boot? You want to be the boot? Yeah. Which one are you now? Are you hallucinating, Miller? So, girl. What are they building? There you are. Is he looking for a specific game? Not bad for two guys who are turning into goo on the inside. I don't. I really don't want Miller to die. Those drives were built at the Bush shipyards, but for private contracts and not for us. And for the last mm. two years, every last one of them has found its way to Tycho Station and Fred Johnson. I just reviewed the entire report myself. I don't really trust Earn Right. We cracked down hard on Sirius and the OPA, and then we exposed the truth and nailed Fred Johnson to it. I always liked the side of you. I think that was a show for him. There you are. Right on time, as usual. <sighs> Sir, it's a pleasure to see you again, madame. For me as well, monsieur. No, I like it. She's not my kid. Take care of her. If Amos tells you to do something, you do it. Don't slow me down. But why is this girl with this guy? Look, if you ain't over your head, you better say so now. Shut up, I'm thinking. Definitely let Naomi do the thinking. Or the little girl knows where to go. The OPA uses them to mark the route to the docks. Mm. You're full of surprises. I've heard that. She can keep on to those surprises. They seem to be benefiting everybody. You hear that? What? Is his hearing going? <gasps> now, how come Holden isn't like getting sick? Like, why isn't he bleeding? Please exit the pod. Oh God! It's an experiment. Oh God, damn station! Oh my God! What? Is that feeding it? Is that destroying it? What was I just doing? We're going the right way. Does the wall move? 
Oh, gross. Yeah. You're probably dead, dude. No, I'm good. Let's go. Don't let him on the roof, see. Sitara. We got company. Is it our boys? Nope. Shit. Mars will accuse Earth of using a bioweapon. Earth will claim it was Mars. The belt will blame the other two. It's a good way to start a war and to cover it up. Yep. Or they'll blame Holden. Hey. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to when Holden was holding that gun on Amos, he's definitely not going to shoot Amos. And Holden has a hard time with that, doesn't he? As he should. Come with me. We need to go. No. Mm. Please! You'll die if you... you... Gotta let her go. I mean, now Holden's starting to show signs. <sighs> Why? I thought I was helping you guys. Come on, I almost got blasted getting out of that lobby too. <laughs> You were saying something about help. Mm -hmm. We've been through this shit together. Okay, kick my ass when we get out of here. Turn me in. But right now, you gotta think about your crew. He wasn't wanting to shoot anyone, but I think he might shoot Kenzo. Tell me why I'm a good man. You know that sometimes a man is pushed so far that he does things that he doesn't recognize. Hold it! Both of them are just kind of faced with their mortality that they kind of just don't give a fuck. They're going to do and say what they need to. Does this look like the right way to you? That's what I thought, was maybe it was a false wall. This is it. This is it. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Sure is. I have to get on that ladder, look down, and feel like I'm gonna just faint. No, thank you. Do you realize oh. our son would now be older than you were when we first met? But he'd probably be twice as handsome. <laughs> Thanks to you. Yeah. Frank knew those drives were stolen. He didn't commit suicide. If Aaron Wright really did have Frank killed, Yep. And you're not safe here either. I will be for a time. So long as I play a familiar role. Yep. The stubborn old woman. Eyes locked on yesterday's game. Too blind to see the world has passed her by. She knows what role to play. I just say just how pretty she is. She's always pretty, but with her hair down, billowing in the wind. Stunning. Speaking of stunning. We're good. Hey, Amos. <laughs> He's gone. I think he might have been infected. What did you do? Yeah. What he had to. What happens when we take too much of this stuff? Possible anxiety, skin rash, sudden death. Better than melting from the inside and slow death. How the hell did you guys get your hands on a Martian gunship? Legitimate salvage. Yeah, well, it's fine by me. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Legitimate salvage. <laughs> he didn't make it. End of story. We're waiting. Uh, all right, all right. Look, look. I understand how you feel, all right? Semi. Stop. So if we stick around here, we run the risk of getting killed. He's right. He is. I don't need to a goddamn thing. That's not going to go well for you with Amos. You stand by to drive us out of here. Alex, you don't do it. Amos, fire up those consoles. Well, Amos! How dare you? You don't think I'll shoot? Oh, attaboy. Attaboy. You say wait, so we wait, boss. 
I love that man. I love that man. I love that man. These earthers ain't gonna let us out, man. No. They ain't never gonna let us out. We just reach for the machine. Just <laughs> <laughs> Miller riling up the troops. Wow. Wow. I don't know if that guy recognized Miller, but Miller definitely recognized that guy. Holden's good with a gun. Not Holden. Damn it. Miller's good with a gun. Oh no. Oh my god. I'm... What happens when they get to the ship? They're just gonna die in space? I don't even know if Naomi will let them on the ship. For Havelock. Let's go. That's satisfying. It's a long story. <laughs> Holden is just so, like, just not accustomed to Miller, his style, killing, just, it's so blatant. Where's your hat? What does rain taste like? I never thought about it. How could you ever leave a place like Earth? Everything I loved was dying. I, I don't want them to die. I don't know how you come back from what they're going through, though. I... You guys look like shit. <laughs> I mean, it is beautiful. Amos waiting for you to take you in. It's a beautiful sight. You guys haven't noticed I'm very much teaming this these days. Mostly because the other two men's are dying. <laughs> so. You're pretty messed up. The machine keeps trying to switch to hospice. What is this? This is a Yes. I shot him. Holden wouldn't do that to us. He might not know. He wouldn't do that to us. I mean, he was in that bunker with all the people and the radiation went off. You waited. You knew I was right about you. Being in charge is a shit job. Indeed. You can have it. <laughs> you are a gunship, and I am a Navy pilot, so... Pew pew! To break loose, right? Or just force your way out? Fair. I mean, now they're just a Martian gunship, but... <laughs> it is what it is. Fun. What's incoming right there? Was that another one of those ships? Send it all to Thoth. People, I think we just gotta fix on the bad guys. No contagion, so that's good. We saved a few, we should have saved more. We will. Seemed like a very loving look. What is happening there? Oh, Kenzo, you gotta go. You gotta go. What? So I'm uh, kind of having um, emotions, emotions. Um, obviously, through the entire episode, I keep proclaiming how much I love Amos because, like, he just is steady, which is interesting. I, I for a solid second, I thought he was like going to help Semi 
and I'm so proud of him for not doing it. Um, but I was so emotional about Miller and Holden and like Holden really wasn't showing a lot of signs of being sick until the end. Miller definitely was immediately showing he is toast. I don't know. And I mean, even Amos says it when he puts the, the medical cuff on him that he's like, it keeps wanting to like put you in hospice. <sighs> I don't know how we fix this. I don't know if we can. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if there's a way to help them, maybe make them comfortable, but I'm so confused. Our crew is pretty phenomenal in the fact that, you know, Amos was okay with taking people with them on the Rosinate. And, and, you know, Naomi, of course, you know, like wants to save the little girl, but, you know, to even like take on more people that then they have to feed and then they have to find homes for, or, you know, give shelter to. Uh, I think that says a lot about the character of the people that we're dealing with. Um, but it also says a lot about Miller and how easy it is for him now to take a life. And for him, it is survival. Um, and, and except for him killing, what's his face? Um, his name is Pockmark. You know, he takes out Havelock's, I guess, attacker, <laughs> attempted murderer, Pockmark, which is a weird name. But, you know, like he does that out of cold blood. And you kind of see the difference between him and Holden, where like Holden really could have just shot Kenzo and, and wasted him. And he didn't, and because that's not who Holden is. Um, I still don't know, or I don't know if I would count it necessarily, um, the, the gun battle on the dock, if Holden actually killed somebody or if he just injured them. But then even you see Semi and, and Amos kind of decide that the guy that got touched by the sickness, they weren't letting him come on the ship and they disposed of him. And I think that was actually the appropriate thing to do in that situation. Um, you know, it's kind of like The Walking Dead. If somebody's bit, you know, give them the opportunity to leave, take themselves out, or you will take them out once they die. Um, but I feel like in this case, it was the right call. It's really interesting that we see Christian not really know anything that Aaron Wright's saying or trusting Aaron Wright. Uh, it, it was very obvious that like, he's like, oh, I have all this information now. Here you go. I reviewed it myself. And you can kind of see where she's looking at it. And he's like, what? And she kind of is just like, oh, nothing. I think, uh, I think, I think DeGraff's death is affecting me. And she's very smart for playing that off and then telling her husband later, you know, like, uh, I'm going to play the role that they, they think I am is the old woman who's always a step behind, always stuck on the past. And, and I think that that's smart of her because we know she's not that person. We know that she is cutthroat and she's going to find out. And I don't trust Aaron, right? And then at the end, we see Julie's dad, Jules Pierre Mao, you know, walk up to the group. And now we have a new player in the game. And he was very much okay with sacrificing everybody on Eros. I, I don't know what their end game is with that. If it's just to have like, Eros fall and somebody take the blame for it if they are actually doing an experiment where then they like continue the experiment. Um, not quite sure, but like something is alive on Eros. We see it with Kenzo and we see it take Kenzo. Uh, not sad about it. Like, you know, I think actually Kenzo is a, a good character. It would have been nice to actually have him around for a while, but at the same time, like I wasn't attached to him. Yeah, you know, that happens to Holden, that happens to Amos, that happens to Alex, Naomi. I'm going to be upset. Miller, I think, is already toast. I think I've had tears in my eyes, like, for, like, the past 40 minutes. Uh, just realizing that there's no way back from that. I'm sorry, he can have his hat back. Mmm. <laughs> So anyone who's new to my channel that has not seen any of my emotional reactions, once I get attached to characters and, you know, I'm, I'm in depth in their stories and I know what makes them tick and who they are to their core as a person, 
Um, I have a hard time letting go. And getting to know Miller, even though I was fighting it, I was fighting it, I was fighting it, probably episode seven or eight, I was like, I'm team Miller. I think when he get, was fired from Star Helix, from then on, I was like, I'm team Miller. And the idea that he's going to die in this way for Julie, who had died, and it was almost in vain. And again, I don't know how the story goes, but it just seems so sad. And then he's talking to Holden about, like, what does rain taste like? It reminded me of Lopez saying, you never got to see an ocean on Mars. <laughs> okay, he's not dead. He's not dead. He's probably dying. He probably will die, but I have to just remember he's not dead yet. He's not dead yet. They're probably going to build his character more and make it hurt even more. <laughs> Fuck. I feel like as wrap-ups go, like, I, like, the last episode was, like, so heavy and there's so much information that my opening commentary will always be longer than my end commentary because there was so much to rehash and information to digest and put out there that like going into this episode this is all the information that i know and now i'm just like i, I don't know what's happening with eros i don't know if these characters are gonna live or die where do they go from here like they, they can't go where the the bad people are going Thoth or th Throth, something like that. Damn this show for making me feel this way. Okay, guys, like, subscribe. Full length reactions are on my Patreon. Early reactions, up to two episodes early, uh, are also on the Patreon. And like, subscribe, get notifications so when I do post new episodes, even new movies uh, or episodes of different shows, you will get that notification. <sighs> I'm going to go have a good cry because I don't know what's happening and I don't want characters to die that I'm attached to. So, <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> I'll see ya.